Well, ho, 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 Merry Christmas. It is the season. So I've got my Christmas tree here and <clears throat> I'm about to set it up. So we always kind of go in the corner of the house over here by the TV. So I've got the base. It's really dark in here. We don't really have a light for this part of the room. That light sucks. Um, so it's usually pretty dark unless the TV's on. But anyway, we're going to set it up kind of right there in the corner. Uh, and I think that'll look kind of good. So, um, obviously, I'm not going to show all of my Christmas decorating because that's probably not what you guys are watching the videos for. But I like to kind of blog a little bit of life here and there. So, anyway, tis the season. Hope everybody is doing well. I don't know when I'm actually going to make this video because tonight it's all about getting the tree ready and it's freezing out. So, I probably won't film any bait material tonight. Um, but... Anyway, just wanted to show you guys what we're doing. So have any of y'all gotten this Disney Plus yet? I mean, if you're a 90s kid like me, this is literally the jam. I mean, all of your childhood favorites. So let's just take a look. Disney, <coughs> and then the, all, you know, all the other kind of uh, other parts of, of Walt Disney. But I mean, look at this. So Nightmare Before Christmas. Uh, the Goat, Aladdin, Beauty and the Beast, The Little Mermaid, Tangled, which is actually pretty funny, The Lion King. I mean, does it get really any more iconic than that? Cinderella, if you're into that, Snow White, Bambi, Sleeping Beauty, it's been a while, Winnie the Pooh, Lady and the Tramp. I mean, 101 down, we could go on and on. All right, here we go. We're going to cut the tree. Oh. Watch out, buddy. <laughs> Still hasn't gone all the way open. Do I really? Ah. Come on now. We might have to like open it ourselves. You mean you gotta let it fall. Well, that's better than it was. So you let it sit for a day. What do you think, buddy? Dead on plastic black bucket swim bait jerk bait blend. Yeah, look at that goodness. I say we go play with it. Oh, come on, get in focus, baby. Lighting's real uh, bad over here. Let's go play with the stuff. And we have a new mold to play with it with. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, as you could tell from probably the thumbnail, we have a panfish mold. So this mold was sent to me by a subscriber over at 4B Baits and Jig Heads, okay? So uh, Brad um, makes spec, crappie, sakale, whatever you want to call it, lures. And he has taken a Jacob's mold and um, through a little bit of work on his own part, he has core shotted it. So as we can see here, he has actually put rods in the center as to get a core shot effect on his uh, bait here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, at least just first, we're gonna shoot this thing without the rods. Um, just to try to, to shoot just a solid color. I've never shot this mold before. Just got it today, matter of fact. And, uh, and just see what we can do. Um, so we're just gonna make, you know, probably just a simple chartreuse with some flake, maybe a chartreuse pepper um, uh, spec jig or a grub and uh and then and then we'll probably play with the core shot effect and see what we can do so thank you so much brad if you guys are looking for some um you know handmade and unique uh crappie crappie baits um definitely check him out um yeah, his number's right there and uh and i do know that he's on facebook smoking hot okay dog so we're just gonna make a kind of a, a chartreuse pepper. You see a lot of chartreuse bright colors in <clears throat> uh, crappie baits, sort of like saltwater colors, a lot of bright, shiny things going on. So a little bit of dead on chartreuse, okay. And then we're gonna add some 0 0.035 black flake. That's medium black flake, okay. 0 0.035, sort of a chartreuse pepper. And then we're going to add some further sparkle with some small 
hologram flake right there stuff is lovely so we're gonna add a little bit of that and that's a nice bright flashy crappie killing sock away slaying slab something or other color boom and then later we'll make some core shots using that color as the core I think so here we go let's get our injector ready and boom I've never shot that mold it's a little cold out here so hopefully the temperatures aren't gonna be a problem hopefully everything filled in um, but that's my first time ever shooting a panfish lure of any kind I have never ever had a uh, panfish lure mold so anyway Hopefully it turned out. Okay, first ever panfish lures. You know I have to do a drum roll. So, drum roll please. Let's see if they turned out. And they did. Looky, looky. Check those bad boys out. Let's take a look. So I'm not too familiar with what makes a good spec bait as opposed to a bad spec bait, but I like that little ball on the tail. That means that tail is going to have some movement. And uh, my color is not bad. I would actually brighten it up maybe if I was um, going to like make these for a customer or something, but those, those really aren't bad. Let's, um, let's bring over the mold, or, excuse me, the, mold, the bath. Okay. Looking good. Guys, it's the new experience. Never done that. And it worked. Let's do it again. Okay, we're going to do shoot number two. There is our mixture there. All right, let's do it. A couple more of these. I have a buddy who's going to the uh, St. John's River to go spec fishing here in a couple of weeks. So I might uh, might send these his way, see how they do. But yeah, that is pretty cool. Now I didn't hold as much pressure that time. I'm I'm, I'm getting cocky, so hopefully uh, we didn't just screw that one up. All right, let's see how round number two did. Yeah, it looks looks like they all filled. A really cool mold, and I'm sure it's, you know, when you're working with a bait this size, these dimensions. Doing the core shot thing is probably going to be a bit of a challenge. I mean, you're talking about some very small areas that you're working with, but we're going to give it a shot next. Okay, so um, I'm pretty sure that this gentleman made this, kind of cut these rods himself and made this into a core shot mold. Um, I don't really recommend altering gates and, and cavities in your CNC molds to try to core shot them yourself. You'll probably end up screwing something up. I don't know. Um, however, this gentleman went to the trouble. So we're going to uh, test it out and see how they do as a core shot. So just like with the real core shot mold from Angling AI, we're going to oil up our rods. All right. And then we're going to set them into place and these just kind of go across both sides like that so it fits in there and then goes across to the other side here we go with that one and uh, they're not a perfect fit like I said this was done at home um, but the samples that he sent me the core shot effect was really good so he definitely uh, did his homework and did a good job um, as far as that is concerned okay Oh, come on. And I mean, these are teeny tiny rods. So, um, but yeah, that's how that's going to do. So we'll go ahead and close the mold and uh, hopefully that will work. Okay, so now we're going to shoot technically, I guess, the shell color. Um, so we're just going to add a bunch of small, there we go, gold flake, uh, excuse me, purple flake. So a bunch of this little purple, and this is essentially just going to be a glitter only color. 
uh, in clear plastic. That way we will see the core through it, hopefully. That's the uh, goal, anyhow. Because, you know, black grape and dark purples like that and chartreuse, they, uh, they, they tend to contrast really well. Um, so I, I do think that you'll actually be able to see the core shot effect, um, ho hopefully very well. So we, we might actually add a little bit more flake to that. Just because. And then we're actually going to add more chartreuse to our core color uh, just to brighten that up a smidge. So, um, as for right now, we're going to go ahead and shoot the, um, the uh, shell color. So, get our glove on and here we go. The rods are in place. They've been lubricated. Hopefully, this works. We shall see. I have no idea how uh, easy or not easy it is to core shot these correctly. So we will hope that that worked out. But um, that's kind of going to be the shell right there. Okay, let's see how these shells did. Hopefully uh, they did okay. Actually, we're just going to set that down and zoom in because I don't want to like throw all these shells out of place necessarily okay I think I see what I have to do I think I have to cut them right there uh, with some little scissors oops sorry that was out of focus I, think I have to just kind of snip them off um, on both sides and then then I can slide the rod out because it as you can see it fills in the rest of the bait so, we're going to test that theory. Okay. See if that rod will come out. Actually, I'll just break them off that way. Okay. Yeah. I think that's what we can do. Let's just kind of do it, do it that way. And then there's our body. All right, yeah. So, I think that's what we're going to do. Um, so, we're just going to... Go ahead and and, whoop, and break these off like that. And uh, come on, focus, baby. Come on now. Focus. Focus, focus, focus. Come on, jeez. All right, I'm backing this out. Uh, I thought that helped. Come on. Still working on this new camera. And then I can uh, kind of cut that. Come on, baby. Why are we not focusing? Sorry, people. I'm trying to. Get this thing to, to work for you guys. Yeah, there we go. It's open on both ends. So anyway, yeah, definitely uh, a couple more steps involved, but that's how we're, we're gonna do this. And uh, I definitely think these will look really cool. Okay, I'm gonna try to do this while holding the mold uh, up to where you can really see it. So, they literally just fit in, um, so that's the top and bottom side, so I think this is right. <laughs> Come on now. Yep, they just kind of fit in there. They kind of look like shrimp with those little eyes on either side there. Okay. So anyway, that's how we're loading the shells back. And... Hopefully, come on now, get in there. And hopefully that right there will get the job done. Okay, and there it is. That is finished, I do believe. I think those are all in there the right way. So carefully line up the mold. Okay, that's on there. So... We will clamp it, that way everything stays in place. And then I might even put a bigger clamp on there, one of the ones that I can tighten, just because I'm gonna really need to really force some hot chartreuse plastic in there to try to fill the cores. Um, but I, I don't wanna blow out the mold or flash, but I really wanna make sure that it 
can fill out the bait past the past the body and hopefully even get that little circle on the end there um, so that's the goal um, i actually have to stop filming now because i ran out of time so when i get home later i will meet you guys back out here in the fish cave we'll reheat up our plastic which is setting up um, and then we will shoot this mold so this is just going to sit like that um, for the next hour and a half or so and uh, and then we will be right back with you guys okay everybody i am finally back and this mold has gotten a little cold cold molds so we're just going to take this heat gun here and we're just going to get the get the the permafrost off of it because what you don't want to do especially in a little core shot situation like this is try to shoot a freezing cold mold it's in the 40s out here and uh, you, you just want to get some get some heat into that mold that will help that plastic so much um, so I mean you know this thing is it's pretty smoking hot so we're going to uh, just kind of do this for a little bit and uh and then we're gonna go ahead and shoot the core color which i went ahead and added a little more chartreuse to it just to brighten it up so that hopefully you can see the core effect better once we uh actually shoot the bait okay here we go so this plastic is hot probably about 370 um and we're gonna need it so anyway let's go ahead and shoot these cores and I really hope that that works. We're holding a lot of pressure, hot plastic. We heated up the mold. Um, so in theory, that should have worked. It, it didn't really feel like anything happened. You know, the injector didn't like go down very far, uh, but we are holding pressure and hoping for a miracle. So that's probably about all I'm going to get out of that. Okay. All right, fingers crossed. Okay, I really hope that this worked. So, let's see if it did. Yes, look at that. Look at that, you guys. Boom, core shot, all of them filled. Wow, look at that. Let's see if we can uh, take a closer look there. Wow, look at that. Nice purple body with the chartreuse core tails. I mean, are those some spec baits or what? Look out. Look out, Sokolay. Check that out. What, what, what? Oh, guys, I'm excited. We got to make some more. It's getting late, but I got to make some more of those. Okay, so here are the shells. Whoops. Well, I guess it's going to go that way. There are the shells for the next run. So I just got to take these out and then get those rods out. And, uh, and then we will go ahead and move on to the next core shots. Okay, and again, there we have all of our shells loaded. And we will line up the mold. There we go. Okay, here we have our plastic nice and hot. And let's try to do this quick. Get that plastic in there quickly and hold lots of pressure. All right. Hopefully that worked. Like, like I said earlier when I did it the first time, it's like the, the actual plunger like doesn't really go down much. So it's, you, you hardly don't feel like you did anything. So hopefully, Hopefully that did something though. Okay. Definitely fingers crossed. All right. How did we do? Yes. Look at that. I think it works really well. And uh, I'm, I'm happy to have gotten such good results for my first time ever making panfish baits. I mean, that is really not bad. Yeah, there you go. There you go, folks. What do y'all think? 
Are are these pretty cool? Not not bad for my first for for my first attempts. Okay, everybody. There is the finished product. Um, it, it actually doesn't look like that much. I feel like I made more than that, but I made four runs. So that's, uh, that's 40 of them right there. And I think they're looking pretty good. I mean, that is a really cool core shot look, if I do say so myself. And it's not probably even that great of a color for a spec bait. And that's just kind of what came to mind, you know, I figured, hey, if I use chartreuse, then I can shoot a few solids, and then I can also use it for a core effect. And that way I'm not just mixing up too many different colors. But uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed. Um, I've had a lot of requests to, to make some panfish lures. I've just never had a mold. And then um, I have some of the best subscribers on YouTube, I'm convinced. That's not cliche. Uh, and and one of you guys sent me, sent me this awesome freaking uh hand altered mold as well so it's not not just a straight mold this one had a little bit of tlc put into it um so yeah i i hey brad i appreciate it again uh this has been awesome i will definitely have this mold on here again and uh hey some of these are going to the saint john's river uh here in a couple of weeks so uh i'm sure i will get a picture of some of those hanging out of some uh crappy mouths so that's what it's all about. That's why we do this. Make your own baits or, uh, or make baits for other people and then hopefully uh, they catch fish on them. And uh, real quick, I got some new eyeballs in from Dead Meat Customs. Um, he is just killing it with the eyes, you guys. <laughs> Get it? Eyes, you guys. So these, these are cool. He sent me those kind of extra. They have like a holographic background, as you can see there. And then these uh, blue ones I had kind of custom made. Um, so really great stuff, again, from Dead Meat Customs. Um, so yeah, you can, you know, it's, it's not hard to tell who I like to use, huh? But um, yeah, really cool stuff there. Come on, baby. Focus. Yeah. So yep, those came in today. Got several bags of each in a few different sizes. So uh, be on the lookout for some of those in some future swim bait videos. Um, doesn't get much cooler than custom 3D eyes. Okay guys, well thank you so much for tuning into this video. Uh, it's getting late, it's getting cold, um, so I gotta quit looking over here at the screen and look at you guys. But uh, hope you enjoyed the, the panfish lures. I certainly know that I did. I had never done anything like that before, um, so this was a, a first time for me. Speaking of first time stuff, some cool exciting things coming up in about two weeks. We're gonna be entering a whole new realm of, of uh, custom tackle crafting that has nothing to do with soft plastics well it does in the end game because you also use this type of tackle sometimes in tandem with your soft plastics um but anyway we're going to be getting into some cool stuff we're going to be back on another road trip um it's going to be a lot of fun so thank you guys so much for tuning into this video shoot me some comments down below let me know which ones were your favorite and we'll catch you next time